Good morning ladies and gentlemen. We've got a bit of a frosty one but not too bad. So we're going to start the day in the van today because uh, I've been transporting goods around. So we're taking Chance and little Reggie into work. So I have to brew today. He's gone all calm now. A minute ago he was absolutely wrecking the joint. What do you think Chance? I don't like sitting up front with Reggie. Okay, well, whatever mate. So I thought I'd give you your daily dose of Wedgie. Wedgie! Hello! Hello Reg! Oh my gosh! Honestly, you could just eat him. You could eat him up. So we're going to take him into work. I've got a brew again today. So uh, Gemma's at the dentist and unfortunately little Wedge is going to have to come in with me and uh, well sit in his cage. I know I'm a horrible bad bad man aren't I? The thing is he's only had his first course of injections so we can't take him out anywhere on the lead. We can't really take him to anyone else's apart from my mum's and she can't have him today so you're stuck with me Wedge it's a good job you got this nice warm bed isn't it oh look he's going to sleep he's so cute you're a bit cold Chancy boy I might put him in the office and put the heating on for him what do you think old timer oh Chance you've not been ousted you know mate you haven't you haven't buddy he's just acting up for the camera don't you believe it they were playing last night, which is a good thing. We're breaking down barriers, aren't we, mate? Building bridges. Right, let's go to work with the uh, with the doggy fam. So we're in the brewery. We've mashed in. We're just starting the transfer into the boil kettle now. I've just taken delivery of 20 kilos of mosaic hot pellets. Yes. That emptied the bank account somewhat. And I've also put on a coat of varnish to the top for the uh, for the keyser. So she looks good this morning. I'm really quite pleased with how she's turned out. Fresh eyes and all that. Come in this morning and have a look at it. It's, I think it's great. So all I'm doing now at the moment is figuring out the electrics. So I want to put a recirculation fan inside the keyser. Um, so I found one here, a little 12 volt uh, computer fan if you like. And what I've done is I've just hooked it up to the Fluke multimeter just to have a look at the current that it's pulling. So we seem to be capped off at about 56, 57 milliamps. Doesn't want to be going much higher than that. So that's basically no power hardly at all and that's just being run by a little one amp LED driver so it shouldn't be putting much stress on this because this can handle a thousand milliamps and this is pulling like I say 56 milliamps at the moment so not a lot at all and we've got an LTEC STC1000 I like the LTEC brand it's one of the best ones out there in my opinion it's solid, big beefy relays and all that. So I've just wired up the lives. So we've just got a live in. That'll obviously be piggybacked like this one is with the main in feed. And then we've got a heater and a cooling element. A cooling relay, should I say. Uh, input there. So that'll go out to power the fridge. That means that the fridge, I think, is going to be pulling. Well, we'll have to have a look at the rating later on if we get chance. But I don't think it's going to be more than a couple of amps for the motor down there. And then if we decide to put a heat tube in there, because sometimes in the porch in winter at home, it can get a little bit cold. So if I decide to do that, I'll probably just wire up some kind of plug like this. And then maybe just have it dangling out the side of a junction box like this. And if we need to put a heater in there, we can just retrofit it. I don't think I'm going to bother with it straight away. We just want the cooling elements. Here we go. That's picked up a little bit in terms of speed. We've climbed to 58 milliamps. I've got a couple more computer fans here. There's one there, and one there. 
so I just need to, I'm going to plug these in and see what current they draw and how stable they are and if they're more stable than this little fella then we'll use them instead, we'll see I just don't want it to kind of burn out while I, it's in situ and I'm not sure where I got this computer fan from so obviously it's a bit of a mystery but the fact that the current's climbing a little bit I don't know, it's dropping again now, it seems to be self-regulating. Anyway, don't want to waffle on too much about that. Cooling fan to go in the freezer. STC to control the whole shebang. The cooling fan will be on all the time. The STC will turn the, the, the kegerator on when required and the heater when required. And then I've got to run some uh, beer lines and gas lines into that and into here. And obviously the good thing about putting these wooden collars on is we can just drill straight through there without having to worry about making a mess. So I'm going to put, I think, three, um, what do they call them, secondary regulators inside the keyser to control the pressures for each keg individually. And then we'll just have one grey gas line coming out and we'll plug that into our CO2 bottle when we need it it is going to be that simple um and then yes on the inside we'll just pull uh, some 316s from the back of these taps into the keyser and then once we're in the keyser we'll change over to uh three eighths beer line and use that to hook up to the kex right then folks just an update we got a bit carried away yesterday so uh we shot home with this and I forgot to pick up any more footage at work. So here's the bar. Um, unfortunately, there are two major cock ups which I've made. The first one being, I measured all this to fit in this gap and then I got carried away building the top. So the top is too bloody big by the width of this. 20 mil on each side. So as a solution, I'm just going to whip this corner bit off here, meaning that this will be a little bit smaller. It's not a big deal. And then it will slide into position, which is going to be perfect. And then the second cock up. Now, this was built for corny kegs, but I wanted to be able to put commercial kegs in there as well. The freezer is 10 millimeters too narrow internally. Won't fit in. Kind of thought they would. So it fits in. I measured the top and it fits in. But you see how they've got these bands on the side, these sticky out bits. Well, they won't stop it. They put an extra 10 mil on the width. And if she don't go, she don't go. So, yeah, it's a bit of a cock up. But, like I say, easily remedied. I brought this home last night because I thought, yeah, I've got some proof of concept in keg. We'll stick that on tap. Luckily for us, it's cold enough out here in the porch. We've got a temperature of... There we go, but seven and four degrees. I don't know why they're both different because one of them's the other probe's just up here. But uh, yeah, it appears that it's seven degrees up there and four degrees here. Either way, it's definitely cold enough for that keg to sit on the outside. And then we've just jumped straight onto the 316s and just run a 316 line into the back and into the tap. And there it is. So, a little bit of jiggling to do. But it works, it's holding temperature really well, actually. And uh, once it's in that corner, and we've got all this plasterboarded out and done properly, I think it'll fit in there quite nicely without any, any more worries once I've just trimmed that edge down. Anyway, that's it for this one, folks. I'm about to start a new day, actually, but I don't want to attach it onto this vlog. It will be far too long. So I'm uh, going to say see you later, we'll see you on the next one, which I'm about to start filming right now. Cheers. <laughs>